Hello. In this video, we are going to discuss the VSEPR theory, the VSEPR theory. This is a simple but incredibly useful approach to determining the geometry of molecules. It rests upon three pillars. The first is that we are concerned with the valence shell of each atom. The second is we are going to restrict our attention to electron pairs and or domains. And the third is the driving principle of the structure of the molecule is to reduce electron-electron repulsion. And as we see, the acronym quite clearly shows the three basic principles of the theory. For our First example, we will apply the theory to carbon dioxide. We realize that each oxygen atom has six valence electrons. Each carbon has four valence electrons. The V here is an abbreviation for valence electrons. So there are a total of 16 valence electrons in the molecule that we have to allocate them. We are going to allocate them according to the Lewis Langmuir theory where we attempt to satisfy the duet rule for hydrogen and the octet rule for all the atoms past hydrogen. If we allocate the electrons as shown, we satisfy the octet rule for the oxygens and for carbon. And we show that with a sort of Venn diagram, all the oxygen electrons are shown inside a red circle. All of the carbon electrons are inside a gray circle. And the overlap of those, the intersection of two sets, show the bonding pairs. Multiple bonds, double, triple, or otherwise, uh, are a complication in theory. We have to treat all the electrons that make up a double or triple bond as one unit which we are going to dub a domain. So now instead of trying to keep electron pairs away from each other, we can extend the idea to keeping electron domains away from each other. And we can see for carbon dioxide, shown in the red circles, the two electron domains. Each one consists of four electrons, two bonding pairs. Each one accounts for a single double bond. Therefore, within the theory, we are trying to arrange these two electron domains in such a way that the electrons minimize their repulsion between the two domains. Carbon dioxide adopts the linear structure shown because that is the structure which minimizes the electron-electron repulsion between the two electron domains. we can use the results of the VSEPR theory as a shortcut way to determine the hybridization of the central atom. We notice here in this molecule that the central carbon has two electron domains. Therefore, it is going to be SP hybridized. SP has one S and one P, one plus one equals two, and this equals the total number of electron domains for the central atom thereby giving SP hybridization for the central carbon atom. Next, we look at boron trifluoride, BF3. Boron has three valence electrons. Each fluorine atom has seven valence electrons. So therefore, we see that the molecule has a total of 24 valence electrons that we have to allocate throughout the molecule. We can satisfy the octet rule for each fluorine atom. We show that with these circles in yellow, but we cannot satisfy the octet rule for boron inside the reddish brown circle. 
boron here having only six electrons. But this is possible for elements such as boron and aluminum, making molecules which are electron deficient and which will tend to be potent Lewis acids. And we know from experience that BF3 is a very powerful Lewis acid. There are three electron pairs, therefore three electron domains, surrounding the central boron atom, and these are shown in red circles. The driving force for the geometry of this molecule is the electron-electron repulsion among these three electron domains. This results in a trigonal planar geometry, as shown in the figure, where the bond angles are 120 degrees and the molecule is perfectly planar. The central boron atom is sp2 hybridized in this molecule. Recall that there were three electron domains. If we add 1s plus 2p orbitals, we get 3, and this matches the number of electron domains around the central boron atom. In methane, each hydrogen has one electron. The central carbon has four electrons, giving a total of eight valence electrons in the molecule. If we arrange electrons as shown in the figure, we satisfy the duet rule for each hydrogen, the black circles, and we satisfy the octet rule for carbon in the gray circle. And the intersection of these sets are the four bonding pairs, the four single bonds of methane. The four bonding pairs are four electron domains, and each is shown circled in red in methane. To minimize electron-electron repulsion among the four electron domains, the molecule adopts a tetrahedral configuration with bond angles of 109 degrees and 44 minutes. The central carbon is sp3 hybridized. S plus three Ps gives us four, and this matches the four electron domains that we had found for the central carbon atom. The next molecule is sulfur dioxide, SO2, and here we apply the fact that all the members of the family have the same number of valence electrons, oxygen and sulfur, therefore each having six valence electrons, giving a total of 18 valence electrons for sulfur dioxide. If we allocate the electrons as shown in the figure, we satisfy the octet rule for both oxygen atoms as well as for sulfur. This results in a single bond between sulfur and oxygen, as well as a double bond between sulfur and the other oxygen. If we were to look, trying to figure out the bond lengths, we would have to apply the resonance theory here, but for VSEPR, to know the general shape of the molecule, we do not even have to worry about the considerations of resonance theory. Here we see that we have 
three electron domains, two of which are bonding pairs, and one of which is a double bond, which consists of two bonding pairs together, giving a total of three electron domains for sulfur dioxide. Minimizing electron-electron repulsion gives us the so-called bent shape. If there had been a third oxygen atom attached to sulfur instead of a lone pair, we would have had a trigonal planar uh, appearance to the molecule. But the, uh, we cannot see, when we look at a molecular geometry, the lone pair, even though we can infer that it is present. So therefore, in this case where we have three electron domains, one of which is a uh, lone pair, we get the bent configuration. Since there are three electron domains involved on the central atom, we have, as we saw before, sp2 hybridization. 1s plus 2ps gives us three uh, atomic orbitals making a hybrid, which corresponds to our three electron domains on the central sulfur atom. Next, we are going to look at ammonia NH3. Each hydrogen atom contributes one valence electron. The nitrogen atom contributes five valence electrons, giving us a total of eight valence electrons for this molecule. If we allocate the electrons as shown, we satisfy the DeWet rule for each hydrogen atom, and those are the circles shown in black, as well as the octet rule for nitrogen, the circle shown in blue. And we get, uh, at the intersections, we have three bonding pairs, and just held within the blue circle for uh, nitrogen, we have the lone pair. Around nitrogen, we have four electron domains, three of which are bonding pairs, one of which is a lone pair, but to give a total of four electron domains. To minimize the electron-electron uh, repulsion of three bonding pairs and one lone pair, a total of four uh, electron domains gives us this molecule the shape of trigonal pyramidal, as shown in the figure. Because we have four electron domains, that gives us sp3 hybridization. 1s plus 3p gives us four. So that equals the number of electron domains around the central nitrogen atom. Last but not least in this part one video, uh, each hydrogen is going to contribute one electron in water and oxygen is going to contribute six valence electrons, giving us a total of eight valence electrons in this molecule. We can satisfy the duet rule for hydrogen and the octet rule for oxygen as shown on the screen. We see that uh, the black circles contain two electrons. That's the duet rule for hydrogen. And in the red circle, we have the eight electrons satisfying the octet rule for oxygen. Circled, we see the four electron domains around the central oxygen atom, two of which are bonding pairs and two of which are lone pairs. Minimizing the electron electron pulsion from the four electron domains, two bonding pairs and two lone pairs gives us the bent shape as shown in the figure. The 
bond angle here is computed using a particular base set, which is close to but not exactly equal to the 104.5 degrees that we would find experimentally. Nevertheless, we see that the VSEPR theory correctly predicts a bent geometry for H2O water. Oxygen in water is therefore sp3 hybridized. 1s plus 3ps equals 4, which corresponds to the four electron domains around the central oxygen atom. Note that hydrogen in water or any other compound is never hybridized. Hydrogen only has a 1s valence orbital, so it doesn't hybridize, even though oxygen in this compound is sp3 hybridized. I thank you very much for your kind attention. Look out for part two of this VSEPR video. Stay safe, and as always, have a good one.